Hello and welcome to the Thursday, July 25th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. So we found an interesting Python sample submitted to VirusTotal. This sample actually looks like work in progress. And it's always nice to get a little bit of heads up as to what attackers may be working on. This particular example is a Python script that doesn't just capture keystrokes. It also captures mouse events. This is, of course, sometimes needed by an attacker to figure out how a victim is interacting with a UI on a particular web page or application. So this may be the goal here. In the past, I've also seen this being used for on-screen keyboards, but haven't seen an on-screen keyboard in quite a while, so I doubt that's the focus of this particular uh, malware. Malware written in Python and then compiled into an executable is certainly something that's an issue. It's just so easy to develop uh, this kind of malware, in particular for attackers that are just getting started, that aren't willing to invest sort of in the larger toolkits and such. This is certainly a quick way to get a quick key and in this case, mouse logger up and running. And CrowdStrike today released what they're calling their preliminary post instant review or PIR. This is a quick summary of how it was possible to actually release this bad configuration file that caused all the problems starting Friday. And I think it explains quite well one of the biggest questions that I had. How was it possible for this bad configuration to be released? How did it basically pass QA? Well, the problem here was that the CrowdStrike doesn't actually run these configurations in a test system. Instead, they have scripts that verify if these configuration files are syntactically correct. And apparently that has worked well in the past in order to identify bad configuration files, but the particular configuration that was messed up in this update, well, uh, wasn't really checked correctly by these test scripts. The big lesson here, I think, is for critical stuff like this, it, there's nothing that beats running code for a little while in a live system. Syntax checks with what essentially sort of comes down to a linter is a good in addition to and in ahead of actually running it into a live system. But uh, I think you, know, you have to actually run these configurations or any software for that matter in order to figure out if it's causing catastrophic failures like what we saw with CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike also updated their advice a little bit on recovery. They now have deployed a signature that actually marks the bad configuration files as malicious, so it will automatically be removed. That should also help in case later on this malicious configuration file somehow ends up on the system running CrowdStrike again. And this should improve your chances of a simple reboot uh, being able to recover affected systems. And no before published an incident report with details how they ended up hiring a fake developer. Well, fake developer may not quite describe it right here, but essentially it was a North Korean national that claimed to actually reside in the US and then was essentially just remoting in through a laptop provided by Nobifor. This individual used a stolen identity that allowed them to pass background checks. They were only interviewed via video conferencing. Of course, that allowed them to conduct these video conferences from North Korea, claiming to actually be located in the US. The mailing address they used, and that's the mailing address that the laptop was sent to, was apparently a somewhat well-known facility that then just hosts these laptops for the actual person to remote in from wherever they actually reside. I think the ultimate defense here is more stringent hiring practices, maybe insist on actual 
in-person interviews in order to prevent some of these issues and of course also more thorough background checks. The technical part of this is that of course you need to have some kind of program developed in order to detect malicious activity from insiders which isn't always caused by actual malicious people like in this case but could also be an individual that lost control over their equipment or has some malware installed. Well, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.